Three faith-based questions, three faith-based answers. You're watching Faith Feature on the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find hope in the journey. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning into Faith Feature here on the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find hope in the journey. I'm your host, Teddy Caputo, and this week we have a two-part faith feature with Dr. Bruce Jones. For those of you who don't know Dr. Jones, he has a regularly scheduled radio program on the Mars Hill Network called Let's Examine the Word, which airs every Saturday afternoon at 1215, and a new series called Preparing Young Warriors for the Culture War, every Monday night airing at 8 p.m. But today, we bring Dr. Jones on for a different reason. In this two-part faith feature, he will be telling us two different stories about his life. The first story in part one will be him talking about how God led him in Christian ministry and how God is still leading him in ministry today. Let's head over to Dr. Bruce Jones. Hello, I'm Dr. Bruce Jones, and I'm very glad to be able to share with you my testimony today at the request of the Mars Hill Network. The first part of my testimony has to do with my call to ministry. A little background. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, went to a very, very prestigious high school, and did very well in my classes when I got out of high school, better than I ever did in my high school. And when I finished high school, I wondered what I should do. It was 1953, the Korean War had not been officially closed yet, and I thought I'd join the Air Force. So I went down to the recruiter, they sent me up to Rome, New York, and I took the test and I passed to be able to fly. I was thrilled. I never thought I'd be able to do something like that. But in the process, they said to me, no, you can't fly as a pilot. You need to be only as a navigator because your ear in the right doesn't do very well on the tests. Well, okay, so that put me into a different category for my training. Went through my aviation cadet training, and in the process, I came to know the Lord as my Lord and Savior in a fresh and new way. I had accepted the Lord in a little church by my home in Brooklyn, New York, when I was young, but it didn't really stick that strongly, but I know it was real. But then in the Air Force, I really, really came back to know the Lord and was very, very concerned to serve Him. Felt even called to ministry. So when I got into the service, I got an assignment on Long Island, New York, which happened to be 15 minutes away from my home, which was God's ordained plan for me, because a friend of mine who could have taken that assignment took another assignment so I could take the assignment to live where I live at home. When I was there for four months, I was teaching navigators how to replenish their understanding of navigation. And I was a novice in some respects compared to them and their experience, but I had learned new things that they needed to know, and I was there to teach them. After about four months, I was going to the officers' club one day, and I felt different. I, something was wrong. So I went to see the flight surgeon, and they said, you have diabetes, so you could no longer be on flight status. Well, I was sad to know that because I really loved flying and I thought I'd trained so well for it and I wanted to do it and I did it so well, but it was gone, so I had to let it go. So meanwhile, while I'm at Air Force headquarters and first Air Force headquarters at Mitchell Air Force Base in New York, uh, I get assigned to help uh, work through the problems of preparing our centers and bases for uh, atomic warfare. So I actually went out to watch the atomic bomb blow up at one point. Well, during that process of time, uh, I, I was in New York in 1957 now, after a couple of years in the service, Billy Graham came to New York. Well, I was thrilled to go to Billy Graham Crusades and become a counselor and working with the uh, people that were there. It was a great thrill for me to pray and to talk and to lead people to Christ. But when it was over, surprisingly so, in 1957, I was depressed. I really didn't understand why, but I was transitioning from one church to another where there were more fundamental Christians there, and two of the people in the church said, well, what do you want to do with your life? I said, well, I've really felt called to the ministry ever since I rededicated my life to Christ. And they said this to me, you know, God can get you out of the service if he wants to. I was stunned. 
I was a novice Christian, so I thought, really? God could get me out of the service if he wants to? So I thought, I'm going to try. So after being officer of the day, the next day I wrote my letter asking if I could be released from the Air Force to go study for the ministry, and I dropped it on the desk of my lieutenant commander, and he agreed to it, and I had to go one more step to the next one, which was the next headquarters, which was Continental Air Command. So everything took place on the same base. And in three days, my letter was on its way to Washington, D.C. to request being out of the Air Force. But I had asked the flight surgeon, what about my time when I leave the service with diabetes? He said, well, let me see. And so I said, okay. So he looked into it, called me back. And after I had met with the people sending my letter to Washington, D.C., I got a phone call. Hello, Lieutenant Jones? Yes. This is the flight surgeon. Yes. I've been looking at your record. Yes. He said, you know, your diabetes is so severe, we could actually now discharge you from the service with a medical problem. I was stunned. Get out of the service now? I said, well, how? He said, well, how soon can you do this? I said to him. He said, well, how soon would you like it? He said, as soon as you want. <laughs> so on Friday, I was flying down to Washington, D.C., beating the letter that was ever going to get to somebody, and I was on my way out of the Air Force. Now, when I look back on the providence and sovereignty of God, which really is a wonderful story for every one of us to try and tell if we have a story, and that is this. When I was young at seven years old, I had a mastoid operation on my right ear. It hindered my hearing a little bit. When I was 17 years old, I had a second one. And that hearing problem prevented me from becoming a pilot to becoming a navigator, which allowed me to get an assignment through a friend at a base near my home, which allowed me to be near enough to the Billy Graham crusade to become a counselor. I have to give credit to God for his providence in my life. And I was so thankful to know that not only had God called me, but he let me out of the service early for the next step of what I'm going to share with you in just a few moments. But I want to say something else about the providence of God. When you think about your life, if your life is totally committed to Christ, you may never get to where I got to. You don't have to. I only got to where God wanted me to go. You know that song that says, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee? Well, sometimes we take credit and we say, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe it all to me. That is not what we want to say. Now, in the years that have followed, I've been in life now for 60, 70 years, living my life for the Lord. Since that time, I have served four churches, from a small church to a medium church, to a larger church, to a large church, and God has blessed me. My last church that I had as a full-time pastor was the North Syracuse Baptist Church right here in Syracuse, New York, where I live. Also during that time, as I retired out of, the, out of my ministry career, I've had five churches that I've been interim pastor at, in Omaha, Nebraska, in uh, Davenport, Iowa, in uh, Cape Cod and around the area. So God has kept me in ministry all these years. And even though I'm aged at this particular point, I'm grateful for that ministry. In the process, I also had two other exceptional opportunities for ministry. One was that because of my early work with uh, hippies in the coffee house ministry, I was asked if I would serve as the director of evangelism for my denomination, which I was privileged to do and serve that for five years. When that ended, because of a new friendship I had with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, I was asked by him to become his executive pastor. So I spent seven years as executive pastor at the Moody Memorial Church. I enjoy the radio where I can talk about the word and teach the word in the context that I do. Uh, the second ministry I have is I'm writing a book, uh, and that will be talked about in some of the radio ministry, and that book is called Preparing Young Warriors for the Culture War. It's an apologetics book for parents to understand the issues their children and young people face and help them to be equipped to do that, to prepare them for the culture war. And then there's ministry we do one-on-one. -on -one. I still work hard at trying to be a witness for Christ. I carry tracks in my car, and I look for opportunities to witness. And when I get a chance, the Lord opens the door. I'm there to share Christ. So I've served churches that are less than 30, and I've been in churches over 2,000. And sometimes I've been leading and sometimes I've been following. But all the way down the line, I want to say this. All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. 
So let me just suggest before I tell the second part of my story to look in the rear view mirror. Because when you look in the rear view mirror, you have to ask yourself, why did this happen to me? Why did I have two mastoid operations? Why did I get diabetes? Well, let me tell you about that. Because now that I've got diabetes, the Veterans Administration takes care of absolutely all of my medical issues. I never pay a cent for anything I ever get from the medical. Secondly, because I was uh, honorably discharged with a disability, I now get a disability check in addition to other checks to help support me and my wife at this time. So my mastoid was a problem, my diabetes was a problem, but God does really work all things together for good. And I am so thankful and so privileged that God called me into ministry and has led me all these years. Thank you.